Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Russ with rwgresearch.com. So I was doing some digging in my hard drives and I found some old footage of some old projects and I figured uh, this is probably something that a lot of you would be interested in seeing. So, and uh, this video and the video series that you're going to be watching um, is actually my sort of personal reference videos documentation. So I'm just going to publish them one at a time from the beginning to the end and this is like I'm showing you each part across the board along as we made progress, as we learn new things, as we talk to certain people about how things are supposed to work. So that's what this is and uh, that's what I'm going to show you. So enjoy the video and remember, remember this is a few years ago but uh, this is what I learned and now's a good time to publish it. So enjoy! Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Russ, rwgresearch.com. I got all my battery cables complete and there's quite a few of them here. And uh, yeah, I wanted to briefly go through what I did because I saw some interesting things happen here that I want to share with you. So right now I've got all these batteries connected. This is all of them that I have. And I'm using the big batteries here, 100 amp hours, to charge the little batteries, the 35 amp hours, because these are the ones I've been using to run the system, so I figured I'd just charge them with the system and see how they act. Um, so far so good. I don't know if it's the best thing to do, but I've got these in parallel, four banks of parallel, okay, so eight total with all of them. And then these are in series, and these are in series, so they're parallel series. So they're 12, uh, 12 volt rate, 35 amp hour each, um, so that's 70 amp hour. And then these are 100 amp hour each, so they're 100 amp hour, and then they're 48 volts on each section. So anyway, um, this guy's running. It's running at about 507 RPM. It just keeps speeding up a little bit at a time, one little tick at a time. It's been raising. It started about two something. And it just keeps going. Um, so the higher the voltage the better for this system. I think this system was designed above 48 volts. I'm running 48 right now. I'd like to run 96, but I don't have enough batteries to do the configuration I'd like. So the way these are set up is the common standard two battery bank system. One run, one charge, no third battery bank. And basically what I'm doing is checking for 48 volt operation, making sure things are working right, and just getting an idea of how this thing reacts. So I told you guys when I was running 24 volt that if I turn the current all the way up um, like to its maximum which was like 23 amps I basically was seeing an extra little spike happening within the uh, trigger but it only happened once so it triggered then you'd have some time and then a, um, an extra little trigger and I don't really know what that was but I think it was a self oscillation so it was like ringing so it turned on, turned off, and it tried to turn itself back on without the magnet. Um, I think that's what that was, so I was hoping to see something interesting when I went to 48 volts to show that happening again. And as soon as I turned the switch on, I had one coil on, the trigger section here, um, and it went into self-oscillation mode all by itself without the rotor spinning at all. Now what I did do is I added a 250 ohm no, a 1K ohm resistor across the trigger. So the system is running at normal operation the way it should be, the way it was designed. And I put a resistor across that trigger because I have more voltage and I need to lower that trigger current. So I did that and it went into self oscillation mode. So then I added more and more and more resistance in parallel to bring it down because I don't have a big enough, low enough, high enough wattage resistor. So I put them in parallel. There are one, two, three, four, five, one, oh, there's one 1K and five 1.5K ohm resistors, uh, four 5.K ohm resistors in parallel. So that drops the resistance pretty low. Um, the potentiometer is actually basically off, so I'm only using the resistance there. And now the system is self-oscillating while triggering. So it's doing what I was hoping it would do, what I was trying to force it to do with the pulse box that I had set up and tried to see what was going on here. Now, I took out the 
I don't know where it's at, but I took out this guy, right? This is the shunt. So this shunt was on the ground. So I took out the shunt and I got some clamp meters or um, toroid ring meters that are hall sensor. And I wanted to use those instead so I could completely make sure the batteries were connected directly. And unfortunately these things, they kind of suck. I don't really like them. The pulses are pretty fast and it's not picking it up very well. So they're kind of inaccurate. So it's, it's more for reference than anything. But I, uh, I did that. And the reason I wanted to really make this video was to show you actually the oscillation. So let's look at the scope and I'll show you what I'm seeing. All right, here it is in operation. I forgot to say the day's, today's date. Oh, come on, watch. All right, here it is in operation. And uh, today's date, I forgot to mention this. It is 10-6-2017. And uh, took me a little bit. I had to make up all these battery cables. And that was a lot of work. But I put the Anderson connectors. These are the 100 amp connectors. Put a crap ton of these guys together. So now I can configure the batteries much, much easier. Um, temporarily, I've just hardwired all of these. And here is the oscilloscope. So I'm going to go in on the time scale, but you can see the pulse train. All right, and the yellow trace here is across. Where is the yellow trace? So the yellow trace is across the power or the, the, the center of the battery banks, right, the, 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 that'd be the positive of the run battery. And then the pink trace here, purple trace, is actually going to the flyback and then referencing, uh, referencing the positive ground for this guy, so it's basically across the, the charge battery, and then this is basically across the run battery. Clamp meter. Uh, the green one, of course, is on the ground, green for ground, and then the blue one here is connected to uh, the flyback. So this is what you see, and you get a nice pulse train. So even if I stop the, uh, the thing from running here, it would still just oscillate. But I have to have enough trigger current. So if the trigger current isn't enough, then the oscillations stop after a few coils are triggered which is kind of interesting. My terrible sloppy notes here. But the self-oscillation frequency, somewhere around 852 hertz, depending on the current and depending on um, how many coils you connect. So the more coils you connect, the higher the frequency. And I think it was the lower the resistance, the higher the frequency. Yeah. Uh, and then the... Um, the self-oscillation of the coil was somewhere around 348 kilohertz. So the ring of the coil when there was uh, just a couple connected. But anyway, just again logging what I've been doing so that it's all nice and documented for you guys who are following along. Thanks for watching. 513-ish RPM. It took forever to get to speed because it's pulsing. So there's not a much current. Uh, if you're curious, the current is around 1.7 amps, which is like nothing, really. Oh, and that's across the positive. So that's actually seeing both, both current from the negative and the positive. So not quite an amp, which is like nothing. This has been running for two hours. We've got about 1.2 amp hours from this battery, which basically means these two in parallel would be 100, 200 amp hours. So it's a 200 amp hour ba uh, battery bank. So yeah, you can calculate the hours it's going to run, which is a lot. Like a lot. Uh, voltage here across the whole bank is almost 100. Voltage across the charge battery, 48.8. Voltage across the run battery, 50.54. Um, we started out, the whole bank was at 
98.8 so it rose a little just due to the such low voltage on the uh, charge bank and then the charge bank went up quite a bit already from 47.76 up to 48.88 in two hours not too bad and the run bank was at exactly 51 volts so it's dropped about a half a volt so we got a lot more to do but again documenting the process and I thought the self oscillation was well worth noting which is great because I was trying to do that with the pulse box so for it to for it to do it all by itself is fantastic but yeah good stuff thanks for watching God bless you guys have a good day and I'll see you next time bye bye